Next, I want to invite to the stage uh, uh, Mie Inoue. I hope I said that correctly. I practiced it. I'm um, from Reclaim Rhode Island. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to see everybody out here today. My name is Mia Inoue. I'm the membership coordinator for Reclaim Rhode Island. And we're here today from many different organizations and from many different walks of life because we agree on a basic idea, which is that government should provide the basic services that people need to live safe and dignified lives. Now that shouldn't be a controversial idea, right? Government should take care of the people who authorize it. But unfortunately, that's not the way a lot of people think. So for instance, in May, when Governor Raimondo first addressed the gap in the state budget, she immediately said, that everything was on the table and that the cuts were going to be brutal. Why in the middle of a pandemic and an economic recession would the governor's first instinct be to promise cuts to public services and layoffs for public workers? Since then, Governor Raimondo and her director of administration, Brett Smiley, who recently has made moves to start a campaign for mayor of Providence, have started unilaterally cutting funds to distressed cities and towns, and that includes Pawtucket, it includes Woonsocket, Cranston, and Providence. So Brett Smiley is trying to cut funds from the very city that he wants to leave. Yay! Are we going to put up with that? No! Hell no! So, we have to ask, how have we come to this impasse? And really, when you look back at the last 30 years, we've seen a series of cuts to taxes for the richest Rhode Islanders and public services for all of the rest of us. Um, Thomas Segros wrote a really great op-ed in the Providence Journal this week. You should check it out if you haven't yet. And he points out, that as we as we just heard right in the early 1990s the tax rate on the richest Rhode Islanders was 12 percent and what and what is it today 30 years later it's six percent and in the meantime taxes have not gone down barely at all on the median taxpayer and public services keep getting cut again and again and again and so what do we have we have segregated, underfunded public schools. We have bloated prison populations and police budgets. And meanwhile, a lot of people are struggling to figure out how to pay down their debts and how to pay for their own health care. So um, this is a moment in the pandemic that is really shining a light on all of these problems and it's making them a lot worse. And we know that right now frontline workers are having to choose between their lives and their livelihoods. We know that parents are struggling to figure out how to take care of their children full-time while also working full-time jobs. And so it's a moment when we really need the government to step in and do the right thing. And, um, you know, as Tom Seguros wrote in his op-ed, in fact, what's happening is that every year, the state does less for you. So we're here today to protest an austerity budget and to call for new taxes on the rich so that they pay their fair share. Yeah. But it's important that we recognize that what we already have had in Rhode Island for way too long is austerity budgets. So what we're here today to do is to ask, are we gonna keep going down the road of austerity? No! no. Instead, we're gonna choose a new path. And sometimes when we talk about this issue of austerity, people say to us, well, how are you going to pay for that, right? How are you going to cover the gap in the state budget if you don't cut any public services? And it's interesting to notice, I think, when people ask that question and when they don't. Over the past 30 years, every time a new tax cut was imposed for the rich, did anybody ask, how are you going to pay for that? No. no. When we decide to allocate $400 million to state prisons and policing, does anyone ask, how are you going to pay 
for that. So to the people who ask us this question, we say, stop making excuses. Stop telling us that it's on us to do your job. We have the answers. Tax the rich, divest from prisons and policing, and invest in people and communities. It's time to fight for the people and not the 1%. So we call today on the General Assembly and the Governor to fight for a budget that fully funds health care and child care and protects frontline workers. So let's make sure that they hear us clearly. When public services are under attack, what do we do? When health care is under attack, what do we do? When frontline workers are under attack, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, that was wonderful.